Hi, I'm Michael Berger. Hopefully, I just convinced the 500 people in this room that just left that uncertainty and doubt and the word no is not something that they should fear, but something that they need to leverage into. Give me the next two minutes and I'll tell you why this is a message that you and your company should hear right now. Look, uncertainty can cause smart people to become indecisive, to procrastinate, to question their ability to become successful. But rather than letting uncertainty paralyze us from taking action, why not learn to expect it? Better yet, why not leverage the uncertainty to our advantage? 30 minutes ago, I taught these people why embracing uncertainty will keep them sane, make them more productive, and take their career to that next level. I shared with them why the word no doesn't have to trigger their insecurities. Instead, the people I spoke to today, and you watching right now, can use the no's. You can use the rejection to fuel innovation. No is simply a signal for you to find another way, another creative solution. Hey, I went from telling jokes on a cruise ship to hosting 10 TV shows in an industry where 1% of the 185,500 SAG after members even make a living. Do you, do you know how often I've failed? How many times I took my shot and missed? How many times I heard, no, thanks, we're good, we're, we're going to go another way. The word no or missing your goal is not failure. Successful people are not discouraged by not hitting their goal. Rather, they are encouraged by these incremental achievements, by the little wins along the way. Think about world-class athletes who come in third, yet they improve their best time by three-tenths of a second. They are gratified by getting close to the top with every new effort. Your takeaway today is to realize that those failures, the doubts, they're normal. Successful people have them, and you should too. You're completely normal if you suffer that occasional doubt. It is normal to question that next move. But what you need to learn is how to leverage and temper that insecurity with proper risk assessment so that you can feel good about the decision you're about to make. That will determine your success. And remember that success can create this illusion that everything is fine when it's not. I should also add that overconfidence can also be a curse. Being too sure of yourself is the absence of doubt. That can derail your career. The moment we believe we got it all figured out, we lose our humility. In fact, that's probably, the, that's probably the most important word I've said in the last two minutes, humility. Here's a little secret. It's not about you, it's about them. Make the transaction about the other person. Make the person you're talking to the center of attention and they will be the path to your door. They will buy from you, they will promote you, they will make you a success. Here's a two minute clip of me on stage telling an audience what Oprah. Yeah, that Oprah taught me about humility. By the way, if you'd like me to speak to your company, maybe motivate your team, all the information is on my website, michaelberger.com. Thanks in advance for watching. Make the transaction about them. It's not about you. You think it is. You got a Facebook page. What are you thinking? Had a sandwich? Go to bed. Knock it off. I don't care. So how do you get good? I think you should behave more like a talk show host. Yeah, talk show hosts are trained to do something you're not. We're trained not to show interest in other people. We're trained to show extreme interest in other people. In fact, if we hear ourselves talking, we're supposed to shut up and make it about the other person. Now, you know who this is. I'll tell you how I became a tiny little planet in the universe that is Oprah. When I had my talk show, I got a chance to interview her. And at the end of the show, she leans in, and I know you've seen this before on talk shows where the credits are rolling, and you see the, the host and the star, and they lean in and they chat. You ever wonder what they say? Oprah leans into me and says, hey, that was a lot of fun. She goes, you're good at what you do. She goes, it was so nice to have someone else show interest and ask the questions. I said, well, you're, you're welcome. You're, you're Oprah. <laughs> she then says something to me that caused me to pinch the sofa I was sitting on. She goes, would you like to go to the Oscars with Stedman and I? What? Me? I said, uh, no, I got some things soaking in wool. I know. <laughs> Why in the world would Oprah want me to go to the Oprah? This isn't a show this story. There's something to glean from this. I showed extreme interest in her. When you make it about the other person, when you show interest in someone else, you have injected them with the drug so powerful they're gonna to want to come back for more. Now, this actually happened. So I go to the Oscars, and there I am. Spagos, Oprah, me, there's Stedman. Thanks for joining us. How does this apply to you? These awards bankers, I'll do, you know, I'll do your thing. And, you know, but a million times I've stood backstage with the salesperson of the year, month, decade. You know what they all have in common? They have the ability to draw that other person out and make it about them. 
I do this for a living, and within a minute, they've got me talking about myself. We are hardwired as a species to want to feel relevant, to feel important. And when you listen to someone, try this today when you leave. Start a conversation with somebody, ask them a question, and then do something radical. Shut up. <laughs> listen to learn, not respond. People won't know what hit them. It's a remarkable, powerful thing that we forget how much we like to be heard and feel important. People may forget uh, what you say, but they'll rarely forget how you make them feel. Make somebody feel something.